The story of two brothers, Bin and Din. There is a Nguyen family. My brother's name is Bin. He is married. And my brother's name is Din. He is still young. Has no wife or children. Since his parents' death, Din has lived in the same house with his siblings. But Bin and his wife are greedy and often treat me like a slave. With so many good fields, brick houses and valuable belongings left by his parents, Bin took them all. That's the way it is for me. Bin and his wife often make noise all day long. When Din grew up, he found it difficult to accommodate himself, so he asked to live on his own. Bin and his wife gave Din a thatched house, a few ugly fields, and a few small, insignificant belongings and said, There was nothing left from my parents in the past. Your current fortune is yours. It's very kind of you to share it with me like that. Din worked hard but didn't get any better. When he was over 20 years old, he still hadn't gotten married. Because of debt, one by one the fields he was divided into fell into the hands of others. Every day Din has to work as a hired laborer or go to the forest to collect firewood to feed himself. Even though his older brother didn't pay any attention, Din still didn't complain. One day as usual, Din went to work for a rich man. By the time I got home, it was already dark. About to enter the alley, he suddenly bumped into a person lying curled up on the side of the road. Din bent down to help the person get up, but he tried several times but still couldn't stand. So I took a torch to look and saw that it was a skinny and ragged old man, lying unconscious and defecating next to him. The stench was strong. Din felt sorry for him, quickly brought the old man into the house to clean him and then put him on the bed for a massage. After a moment of awakening, the old man groaned and said that he lived in a neighboring village and usually went to beg for food. When he came here, he caught a cold and couldn't go. He had to lie down and was unconscious, not knowing anything else. When Din heard that, he went to find some leaves to cook for the old man. Thanks to that, he gradually got better. Din blew rice again, inviting him to wake up and eat. The old man did not refuse. Din was surprised to see that although he was weak, he ate very well, so he had to give away some bowls to the guests. After eating, the old man covered himself with a mat and lay down to sleep. His snoring and spitting mumbled throughout the night. About three or four times, when Din was sleeping soundly, the old man woke him up and told him to take him to the rescue. Din still doesn't think that's annoying. The next morning, Din woke up early to cook rice and then woke the old man up to eat. But this time the old man stopped eating and spoke loudly to Din, You are such a kind person. Should a kind-hearted person have to endure poverty forever? Since last night you have wholeheartedly helped me. So I can more or less help you. Please bring me a basin and a ladle. Obeying the old man's words, Din brought the basin and ladle. He did not expect that the old man, after holding the basin close to his face, suddenly hit him hard in the nose with the handle of the dipper. Din was bewildered, thinking the old man was crazy, so he quickly grabbed the ladle. But the customer, although old but very strong, pushed Din away and kept hitting him hard on the nose. Suddenly, blood poured out of his nose like a torrent, and after a while it filled the basin. Din was stunned by the strange action. He suddenly looked closely at the basin and strangely, the blood had congealed into a pot of gold. Before he knew what to say, the old man suddenly disappeared.
From then on, Din became rich. He bought a garden, built a house with tiled walls, bought all kinds of valuable furniture, and married a beautiful wife. When Bin and his wife heard that Din had suddenly improved, they were very surprised. Two people came to my house and pretended to visit. In the story, Bin tried to probe to find out the reason why a child like Din with a few small fields suddenly became rich. Din did not hide anything. He told me in detail how he met the fairy pretending to be an old man with a cold, how he took care of him, and how the fairy broke his nose and turned the blood into gold to repay the favor. After listening, Bin and his wife carefully asked about the fairy's appearance and expressed their wish to meet him to have good luck as Din had just mentioned. Not long after, one day when Bin came home from going out at the village gate, he saw an old man with white hair and beard, brown pants and a patched shirt, walking with a cane. Bin looked at the old man's face again and again, seeing how similar it was to the fairy his brother told the story about last time. Immediately, he approached and begged him to come visit his house. The old man hesitated and refused, saying he was still busy. But Bin tried to persuade him to come home. When he arrived at the house, he sat him on the bed, then urged his wife to buy wine to make chicken, and prepare a sumptuous feast for him to eat. Seeing that the old man refused, the couple invited him even more. They took turns serving him very respectfully forcing him to eat and drink until he was full, and said, Please be sincere, we only rely on your nose. The old man expressed that he did not understand the story at all, shook his head several times and refused, saying, Perhaps you are mistaken, I am not a fairy. Then he picked up the stick and tried to walk out the door. But the couple didn't listen, they tried to hold back forced the old man to finish eating, then spread out a mat and fan to invite the old man to sleep. As soon as the old man laid down, the couple had already arranged a large pot at the bottom of the trap. The next morning, the old man woke up early and planned to leave. But how could he escape? Bin and his wife pulled out the pot from below and held it close to the old man's face, holding a chisel in their hand and giving it to him. The old man was bewildered, not knowing what to do, and refused to take it. Several times when Bin tried to tap his nose, the old man trembled in fear and covered his nose with his hand. Bin said, Well, please don't try again. I ask you to fill this pot only. Having finished speaking, he told his wife to hold on to the old man's hand, while he held the chisel, raised his wing and hit the old man's nose. With just one blow, blood poured out of his nose like a torrent. Bin was excited and excited and said to his wife, It's exactly as he said. We're almost there, pot of gold. Seeing that the bleeding had stopped, he gave him a few more bites causing him to fall over. Looking back, he saw that several of his teeth were broken at once and blood was pouring out. It was so painful, but the old man tried to struggle and call out to the neighbors. Hearing the cry for help, the neighbors came. In large numbers. When asked the bin couple why they suddenly picked the old man up and broke his teeth like that, they didn't know how to answer. When I asked the old man, he whispered, unable to speak, and only said that he worked as a soy sauce seller in the neighboring village. People quickly told the old man's children. The old man's son was so angry that he quickly ran to Bin's house. When he saw his father lying in a pool of blood, he immediately grabbed Bin and his wife by the neck and beat them to death. 
Dad then returned from the hammock to file a complaint with the Mandarin. So not only did Bin and his wife lose a large amount of money to treat the old man, but they also spent a lot of money punching the snot out of the officials. Even so, the Mandarin still subjected Bin to the single attack on seniors rule, forcing him to be beaten 30 times. Scary in the book Pancha Tan Tra, Pancha Tantra, there is a similar story. A merchant fell into poverty and intended to change his profession to become a monk. One night he had a dream and saw a god Pat Mani D, the embodiment of nine gold treasures in Kuve Ra, promising to help him become rich. According to instructions, tomorrow I will come to your house in the form of a beggar monk. The merchant only had to hit the monk's head with a stick to turn it into gold. It happened like in a dream, the merchant became rich. But a peeping barber saw it, so imitating the merchant, he invited the monks to his house and when they were inside, he took a stick and hit them on the head. As a result, he was grabbed by patrol soldiers and taken away. The above stories probably originate from the story of the king of Balanai, Benares, hearing the call at the cemetery in the C.A. Mao Sutra, translated into Chinese since 472. In the past, in Balanai, there was a king named Baramayaza. Every night, heard a voice calling from the cemetery. O oh, king! O oh, king! Up to three times. The king told the Brahmins, astrologers, and fortune tellers to ask for their opinions. They replied, Let someone with courage go out and see. The king offered a reward of 500 gold coins to anyone who dared to go to that place. A poor orphan took it in. When he heard the call, he asked, and a voice replied, I am the gold treasure buried in the Tai So area. Every night I call the king to bring the gold to him, but he never answers. Now that you answer, I will I'll give it to you alone. Tomorrow, I'll come to your house with seven other people. What should I do to welcome here? Sweep the house clean, arrange flowers and decorate it. Serve food for the seven monks and me. When giving drinks, he took a stick and hit each person on the head in turn, and directed them to go to the place where he prepared to store the food. Quote dot. He returned to find something to lie to the king. With 500 gold coins as a reward, he went home to take care of everything, and had a barber come to shave his face. Sure enough, the doctor's guests arrived, he took turns hitting each person on the head with a stick and suddenly they turned into pots of gold coins. The barber peeked through the door and saw this. He also imitated and invited eight monks to his house and gave each one a stick just like the orphan did. But the beaten monks lay lying in a pool of blood, except for one who escaped loudly calling for help. The king ordered the barber to be brought to him. He told the king the whole story. The king sent people to search. The orphan's house, but when they tried to take over the gold treasury, the gold turned into poisonous snakes, spewing fire from their mouths. The king said, that is truly his property. Some of the stories below have the theme of wealth and fortune with the image of gold turning into a snake when it falls into the hands of someone who doesn't deserve it. For example, Vietnamese stories told by Southerners, the soul repays gratitude. A guardian worships the soul on the full moon day of the seventh month. A person sleeping early in the night at a cemetery heard ghosts talking to each other. He has a good heart but his offerings are not pure because the banana leaves are stained with blood. He told the story to the uncle. This man proposed another offering ceremony. 
At night, the oil merchants heard the ghost say to each other, This worshipping ceremony is still unclean because the firewood from the pig pen was cooked. Hearing the shopkeeper's advice, the monk was still not discouraged, so he asked the temple to make offerings for the third time. The next day, the merchant heard them say, In one hundred days we will repay the favor. Because of greed, he did not inform this news to the Lord. On that day, while waiting at the door of the uncle's house, he saw a ghost carrying three jars and placing them in front of the yard. When he opened it, he saw gold and silver, but when he put his hand in, it was a snake. He was afraid to withdraw his hand, and the snake turned back into gold and silver. He then knocked on the door pretending to inform the uncle to get credit. Baba repays the favor by giving two gold bars and two silver bars. He went to the market and got drunk, but people stole it, and ended up empty-handed. A story told by northerners. A jar of gold and a jar of snakes. A man went plowing and dug up a jar, and when he opened it, he found gold. He left it where it was. When he told his wife, she said, You're so stupid. Why didn't you bring it home? If it's God's gift, God should bring it to your home. What if someone knows they took it? No one can get it. And if anyone gets it, it means God didn't give it to me. At that time, there was a thief lurking behind the house. When he heard that, he went to the field to bring the pot of gold home. Unexpectedly, when I opened it, it was a jar full of snakes. Thinking it was because the other person lied and made him feel embarrassed, he brought the jar and threw it into the other person's house, intending to let the snake bite the whole family to make them hate him. In the morning, the other person opened the door and saw a jar. When he opened it, it was a jar of gold. He told his wife, what I said is not wrong. What God gives must be brought to your home. Like our story, the Tay people tell it like this. An old man dug up a jar of silver bars. He covered it up like before, went home, and told his wife about it that night. When his wife asked him why he didn't take it back, he replied, This is the land given to me. If the land gives but heaven has not given it, then it has not been taken. There were also two thieves lurking behind the house and overheard the couple's story. They also quickly sneaked out and took possession of the silver jar, but when they reached in to look, they saw a jar full of snakes. Angry at the old man's deception, they carried the jar to the house, climbed up to the thatched roof, exposed it, and then tipped the jar down, intending to let the snake crawl into the bed and bite them. But unexpectedly, when the snake fell, it turned into silver. The old man woke up and told his wife, There, now God has given us something. Seeing this, the two thieves could only go in and pray to the old couple to give them some. The Burmese, Myanmar, people tell the story as follows. There was a couple who gathered firewood and prayed for wealth. The spirit of the tamarind tree told both of them in a dream, if you go more than three steps from the tamarind tree at the beginning of the village to the east, you will get a pot of gold. The couple woke up and told each other about the dream, but both thought that the dream was so vague that there was no point in bothering to dig it out. A thief heard that he dug up a tamarind tree and found a jar, but it was a jar of snakes. Thinking that the firewood collector and his wife were cheating on him, he carried the jar and left it in front of the house. Just like the stories above, the couple woke up in the morning and found that the jar was not a snake but gold. Regarding the image of the snake turning into gold, 
Review the story The Two Sisters and Strange Tales No. 12. Volume 1 Another story The Snake Turns Into Gold combines the story The Two Sisters with the story The Pot of Gold and the Snake, but the image is somewhat similar. Influenced by the story of the Tay people, a younger brother had all his father's property left behind by his brother, so he had nothing left. I was so hungry, one day I went to the field to scoop up shrimps, but no matter how many times I scooped them, I could only get a weak snake, so I brought it back and put it in a jar to cover it. In the morning, I saw that the snake had turned yellow. From there you become rich. Knowing what happened, the brother and his wife also scooped up the snake and put it in a jar. But when I opened it, the snake was still a snake and there was no gold in it. Thinking that he had caught gold but spread false news to deceive them, they came and took down the thatched roof and dumped snakes on the place where he and his wife lay to make them angry. But when I woke up, I didn't see any snakes, but I saw gold, so I became even richer. The older brother became even more angry, so he tried to steal his brother's gold and hide it in a secret vault. But my gold will not decline because of that. On the contrary, the gold he brought back turned into snakes that crawled everywhere, making the couple extremely worried and sad, and then died. Ha Tin people have a story about a fairy who tests mortals. The first time he met her, he was a poor but kind person. He saw a poor beggar who didn't know he was a fairy. He took her home to feed and sleep her. At midnight, when he saw the person complaining of a stomach ache, he gave him a pot to help him defecate. When I woke up in the morning, she was gone and the pot was full of gold. When a rich man heard the news, he also went to welcome the beggar fairy home, treated her very well, and also gave her a pot to defecate. But when I woke up in the morning, I only saw a pot of snakes and centipedes. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.